with Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and the world. This is TMJ4 News at 3.30. Carol Meekins, and thank you very much for joining us for another 3.30 special. We are continuing our series of highlighting Milwaukee's ethnic festivals, and today we celebrate Irish culture by bringing Irish Fest into your own home. This is so much fun. Now, Irish Fest is food full of food, Celtic dance, and more, and while that's not happening in person this year, there's still a way that you can celebrate. So joining me now is Barry Stapleton with the Celtic MKE to talk about the festival, and Barry, thank Thank you so much for being with us this afternoon. This is a fun way to at least pay tribute to something we can't go to this year. Hi, Carol. Thank you for having me and happy Irish Fest. Thank you. I wore green <laughs> in honor of it. You know, <laughs> you, you know a lot about the history of Irish Fest. Can you tell me about why it was started and just about a background that a lot of people may not even think about? Well, actually, it kind of started with uh, Henry Meyer. Uh, getting the grounds. Uh, if you remember, Summerfest was just on the streets and they moved it to the grounds there. And then in 1978 or 79, Festa Italiana started and uh, Ed Ward, our founder and other um, Irish Americans were volunteering at Festa Italiana. And so that was kind of their inspirational moment um, to do an Irish fest. And in 1981, uh, Ed Ward put that together um, by going around to the community, asking for support and um, so it was a big leap of faith, quite frankly, um, and uh, he got it going and we've been going ever since. And now we're a um, um, four day festival getting a uh, 100,000 people over that weekend. And um, it's just it's just a lot of fun. It's hard not to be together this weekend, but uh, we're doing the best we can. Yeah, I think we all are. And, you know, it's one of the most popular festivals we have. Now, there is a virtual festival this year. Can you share with our viewers about that and how they might be able to have a little bit of fun at home? Yeah, we actually put together 33 hours of programming. So all the bands that you, you likely would have seen this year at the festival have sent in videos, uh, all of our local bands and so and, and their international acts. There's culture, there's cooking. Uh, language, um, Irish language, all sorts of things that people can watch. And uh, they can do that by going to irishfest.com slash at home uh, to watch, uh, like, like I said, 33 hours of programming. And it's really uh, um, as close as we can get, uh, but we're very happy about it. It still has a little bit of that feel, that community feel. And so we're very happy with what we put together. Well, that's nice, and we feel like we can take a vacation. Barry, can you quickly tell us about any plans for post-pandemic life 2021, hopefully? <laughs> <laughs> well, we plan to go full bore in, uh, 19, in uh, 2021 um, uh, with our festival next year. Ob obviously, a lot of things have to fall in place, and, and but we feel that we'll, we'll be putting a festival together uh, in 2021. We've already contacted musicians and everything like that, and we'll probably do virtual some virtual events the rest of this year and we'll see how spring goes next year we'll probably have some concerts one way or the other uh, but we're more than a festival we're year-round and so we have a lot of cultural activities and music year-round so um, please come to uh, if they come to irishfest.com they'll see our activities and um, hopefully join us and celebrate our culture Barry Stapleton, we appreciate you being with us this afternoon and giving us a little insight, and making us feel like we at least can take part in a little bit of a festivities. Thank you very much. And you can take part in this year's Iris Fest, as Barry said, by going to our website. We have all the information about this virtual festival at tmj4.com slash links. Now, this is the flag of Ireland. It's got three bands. The green is usually said to represent the Roman Catholics of Ireland, the orange, the Protestants, while the white symbolizes peace between the two. And let's take a look at some Irish facts. Did you know that Ireland is nicknamed Emerald Isle because of its landscape? It is so green and beautiful with leafy trees and grassy hills. And contrary to a lot of people's beliefs, only 10% of the people in Ireland actually have red hair. The national symbol of Ireland is the harp. It's not the shamrock. And the U.S. White House was designed by Irishman James Hoban. Little trivia for you. And later in the show, we're going to go downtown to Ward's House of Prime. But right now, we want to give you a little preview of what the head chef is cooking there. And we have Ch Chef Brian Ward with us now. We appreciate you being with us. And I know you're planning something special. Can you tell us what you're cooking for us today? 
Yes, thank you for having us. Happy Irish Fest, everyone. We're going to be doing three three dishes that are all easy to make at home. So I wanted to pick a few things that people can make in their house do for the weekend so we're going to be doing a shepherd's pie with a mashed potato we're also going to be doing a cabbage dish with bacon fresh thyme and then the last is we're doing a soda drop irish biscuit Ooh, that sounds good wow now can you tell us a little bit about your restaurant brian and and how you're doing right now given the pandemic and everything Right now we've been fortunate, we're, we're open for dining and then we, we've been doing some to-go business, getting into that a little more, but it's, it's a little, little different than normal, but we're, we're here, we're happy to be here. And you know, we've been a part of Irish Fest for nine years now, so it's, it's kinda, this week we miss it, but we've been doing some different dishes here to kinda highlight what we did at Irish Fest and kinda bring what we were doing at Irish Fest back into the restaurant again. Well, we like to see that, and we're going to talk with you a little bit later because we're very anxious to see what you're going to put together for us. We appreciate you being with us. We'll talk with you later. And when St. Patrick's Day rolls around, we're going to see a lot of green beer and shamrocks. The Irish are one of the major immigrant groups that came to Milwaukee. And joining me now to talk about that rich history is Brian Witt, the Irish Fest Cultural Exhibits Coordinator. And I appreciate you being with us this afternoon. Thank you very much. Can you tell us about, I hope you're there. Can you tell us, there you are. Can you tell us a little bit about Irish history, uh, something that people might not think about when it comes to Milwaukee? Well, the Irish have been here, uh, except for the Indians and the French. We were the actually the third uh, ethnic group to arrive in the city. Uh, they got here in the 1830s prior to the famine. And the first thing they did was uh, they started filling in the uh, third ward. Uh, they started uh, dismantling all the uh, big uh, hills in Milwaukee. And uh, then uh, there are other subsequent infusions of the Irish uh, over the uh, next hundred and some years. You know, we know that we have a rich Irish community here in Milwaukee, Brian. Can you talk about what the Irish community is like and why people are so proud of where they came from? The Irish community uh, is uh, very proud of uh, who we are and what we are. And uh, ironically, a lot of that has only grown up in the last 60 years. Uh, we had immigrants, we had Irish Americans, and then in, the 19, in 1960, all that coalesced uh, where they actually had a focal point of uh, different uh, people coming together. Uh, we had the Irish pubs and uh, that kind of uh, formed the basis for uh, a lot of the things like the trips to Ireland, which I know that Barry and uh, uh, Bridget's family uh, went on. Uh, in the past. Um, so we have a very rich and newly developed sense of Irishness in Milwaukee, we have, whereas we had really nothing in the way of Irish language classes or that sort of thing. Now you can uh, learn how to speak the Irish language. You can uh, uh, learn how to play Irish uh, curling, you know, Gaelic football. We have the Emerald Society, the police group, uh, we have the Shamrock Club and the Irish Cultural and Heritage Center, which is another center, along with the Celtic Milwaukee Center. Uh, it's just grown so much in the last 40 years. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that Irish Fest has been here. Yeah, you know, Brian, I think uh, just about everybody's gone to Irish Fest at least once or twice or probably every year in their life. Can you tell us why is it important that people celebrate Irish culture? You know, the look, the talk, the dress. It's a, it's very, it's something that makes you feel like you're from a different country. And I think people get into the spirit a lot. Yes, I have friends of mine who uh, live in Ireland. And uh, one of the things they said was a lot of times when they come to the Milwaukee Festival, they learn things about their own country that they never knew or never taught in Ireland. And uh, that's uh, one of the uh, things that uh, uh, we have managed to develop and uh, grow over the last 40 uh, years, uh, making uh, people proud of who they are and learning more about the Irish culture and uh, just uh, being able to uh, walk around with a little bit of a, a bounce in their step and uh, being able to uh, say, I'm Irish even if you're only a part Irish, like many of us are. Well, Brian Witt, thank you for educating us and enlightening us on all things Irish. And hopefully next year we will have a real Irish fest that we can all enjoy in person. Thank you very much.
You're and coming up, welcome. we're going to check back in on our Shepherd's Pie at Ward's House of Prime. And here's a live look. I, would, I don't know. I've never cooked one. I'm very interested to see. And we're going to learn about Irish culture, war, and the food. So stick around. You are listening to a group called the Henry Girls, and this is a taste of what you can expect when you tune in to Irish Fest's virtual festival. It is jam-packed with musical performances and other great entertainment. Right now we're gonna switch gears, we're gonna turn back to the food, but I do wanna warn you, if you are hungry, uh, you might wanna look away because this will make you hungry. We're gonna go back towards House of Prime. Joining me again is Brian Ward. Thank you again for being with us. Uh, Brian, talk about the Irish dishes that people can get in your restaurant. Well, the Irish dishes this weekend, we're doing the shepherd's pie. Usually during lunch, we have a few more dishes that we do. So we, we're known for our prime rib, but our, Usually during Irish Fest, we go through about six, 7,000 pounds of corned beef during that weekend. So th today what we did was we made the uh, shepherd's pie, which we're showing in two different ways. Some people like to do the shepherd's pie, which was a, when it was originally, I think it was the, er the 1700s in Ireland, it was a dish that was put together so families could use their leftover food. So it would be, it was based being lamb and that was a shepherd's pie where in America shepherd's pie is the ground beef, which in Ireland they call cottage pie. So here we did the ground beef version and it is, it's ground beef, onions, and you, you cook those down together and then you add beef stock, carrots, ours I like to use a uh, rub sage fresh thyme and you really let it cook down simmer so it's almost like and then this this version we're putting on top of the mashed potatoes the other way to do it that you see a lot is where the the meat is on the bottom and then you actually take the potato put it on top and bake it in the oven so I'm showing both versions of that shepherd's pie and then one of the other things that I love to cook with and kind of isn't as popular for some, but in Irish cooking, it's a big thing is cabbage. And a lot of people think of cabbage, they think it's not gonna be as flavorful or not as good. And the dish that I made today is something at home that people can do. So it's, it's shredding up the cabbage and then we braised it in beer and cooked it down. But then to finish the cabbage, to really give it flavor and make it a little more exciting than cabbage is, is we put diced bacon in it onions and then fresh thyme and it really brings out a different flavor that you eat it. it it's it's a lot different than what people think when they think of just boiled cabbage and then the last thing that we made which is pretty easy is i'm not a baker and i wanted to pick something that would go great with it and it was the irish soda drop biscuits where the baking soda is a big part of irish baking and that's what you see and it's it's a uh, easy recipe to put together at home. Just flour, baking soda, baking powder, egg, buttermilk, and brown sugar. And the brown sugar is what gives it the little bit of color that it has, and it makes it a little sweeter. So it's it's one of those great things you can do. You can eat it with butter. A little bit of honey butter would be great with it, but it's also a great dish to go with the shepherd's pie. Great food. You know, it's, it looks like the ultimate time that you can have a nice comfort food dinner. So Brian Ward, Ward's House of Prime, we appreciate you getting us hungry and getting us in the spirit with your shepherd's pie and all of the rest of your good food. Coming up, we're going to have a live performance by some Celtic dancers as we continue to celebrate all things Irish. Don't go away. Welcome back. One of the most energetic and entertaining events of Irish Fest is the Celtic dancing. It's very popular and combines the rhythms of traditional Celtic music with dance. And joining me to talk more about this art form is Bridget Jaskolski with Celtic MKE and two dancers from Milwaukee's Kinsella Academy of Irish Dance. And before we talk about the dance itself, which we'll do very shortly, let's watch a mini performance. So take it away. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Bridget, as we watch them dance, can you tell us who these dancers are and tell us about the dance form? Sure. This is Siobhan and Kieran from Kinsella Academy, a sister and brother duo, uh, very uh, top dancers in their categories when they are in competition. The dance that they are doing is a hard shoe dance known as treble reel steps. Very uh, reel is a very popular dance in Irish dancing, and there's also different dances to jigs, slip jigs, and hornpipes. It looks to me like it takes a lot of coordination. How do people get in shape for this kind of a dance? Is it just kind of practicing over and over, or are there special exercises you have to do? Well, there are special exercises that you have to do, which most of the dance schools will incorporate in their dance classes, a lot of strength and conditioning. And um, it's, it's a very athletic form of Irish dance that they have to do um, years and years of training as they get stronger in their dancing. Yeah, it seems like a good, a good outlet for young kids. Can you tell us how people at home can get involved if they're interested? I know we're virtual, but we have some ways that they can do that. Absolutely. Well, the first thing we can do is watch the Milwaukee Irish Fest at home this weekend. We're very fortunate in Milwaukee. We have nine Irish dance schools, all that will be included in the virtual Irish Fest. So if people go to the website and look at the schedule, all the dance schools are listed under the Celtic Power Hours, and they can watch the dance schools and then reach out to them via their websites to get more information. The I love these dancers are so talented and they look like they're barely even breaking a sweat. Bridget Jaskolski, we appreciate you being with us this afternoon and our wonderful dancers. Thank you for sharing your talent with us and our viewers on TMJ4. Thank you for having us. Yes, we love it. We'll be back after this break. Welcome back, and remember, you can enjoy Irish Fest all weekend. They have their live stream up on their website, irishfest.com slash at home. There you can view the festival's lineup, you can enter their auction, and you can even take part in a mass service online. And as we said, Irish Fest plans to return in 2021, but you will be able to celebrate virtually this year. All this summer we are doing this. We're highlighting the different ethnic festivals that we could not see or we could not attend that were canceled because of the pandemic. Our next show will be on the 25th. So we hope you enjoyed our Taste of Ireland today. Thank you for joining us at 3.30. TMJ4 News at 4 is right after this. <laughs>